Hello, hello, I'm Dakota May, and welcome back to the still unnamed Minecraft Let's Play series. One of these days, it will have a name, but today is not that day. Today is an infrastructure day. I was just talking to our villager over here, and he would rather not be a zombie. Frankly, I can't really blame him for that. Yes, hi. <laughs> The only thing I'm missing to cure him is blaze rods. So getting blaze rods is definitely on the to-do list this episode. But first, I want to show you guys what I've been up to between episodes. I built a couple more of those little five-minute starter farms so that we can grow some sweet berries. And then over here, I've got some melons and pumpkins. Not, you know, nothing fancy, nothing huge just enough to get started and then I'll have the seeds for a proper farm when I'm ready to build one. And all the way up here in the mountains, you can see the clock tower in the background to get a bit of a frame of reference for where I'm at, but all the way up here I've built a super small and super basic ice farm. This is, you know, once again, just something to get started so that, you know, if I need a bit of ice for something else, I can have one without having to go wandering all over the place. It's just um, this wooden area uh, with trapdoors on the bottom, and then I flick this, and the trapdoors go down, water floods out, and then I can reset it, and then just wait for that to freeze. It's this is really, really basic. It took about five minutes to build, and uh, if you don't have an ice area nearby, it's really handy, like um, a frozen ocean or something. It's really handy to build one of these. And in this hole, it's just a little ways down the mountain from the ice farm, I'm growing some kelp. I will build a proper kelp farm later on. I, I'm a big fan of kelp as a fuel source, so I always build a kelp farm next to my smelter. But in the meantime, I just have this little farm um, so that I can grow enough kelp that I can, you know, convert water to source blocks for, um, for bubble columns and stuff like that. Just get a couple stacks and that should be enough until I can get the proper farm going. And all the way down here at the bottom of the world, it's um, at y equals 11, I found a skeleton spawner. I've already finished the mechanical bits of the farm, so it is um, fully functional at this point. Um, it was a little challenging to fit this thing above the bedrock, but I did manage to pull it off. And you can see I've got it hung from a little bit of blackstone and a chain there just to keep it looking purdy and, oh. <laughs> Oh, they're so mean. I just wanted to look at you guys. Well, anyway, I I finished the mechanical bits of it, but this room is a problem. It's uh it's not even fully dug out. It's super ugly. Um I did slab over the floor to block spawns so that cuz it's kind of dark in here with the window, but I've seen so many builds recently with um windows into the spawning room and I'm like, "Oh, that's so cool." So I wanted to try that out. I've never actually done it before. But this is going to be my main XP source throughout early games, so I want it to look nice. I want to have an enchanting room, and another big thing on my wish list, I need an easier path to get here, because that goes down towards the mine, that's a cave system. And the route here is like, it's very meandering, and it like, you have to go four different directions in order to get here, and it it would be much better if I just had some bubble columns like right back here to take me directly here. So I'm definitely going to want to do that and make this room look all pretty and get it so that it's a place I'll want to spend a lot of time in. And while I was working on those various projects, I found this guy. He wouldn't pick up any items, so I name tagged him. And I told him about the other zombie villager and... They're super excited to meet each other. The other guy's just down here. Yeah, so they're all, all aware that the other exists and they're they're gonna maybe share some potatoes or something. Who knows, we'll, we'll figure that out when we get there. 
But for that to happen, we need to get suited up for another trip to the nether. This time, for blaze rods. After a few hours of looking for a fortress, I have finally found one! <laughs> Yay, I'm so relieved. I just finished uh, constructing this little safe path to get here again, should I ever need to. But I'm gonna go explore this thing. Wish me luck! It feels like bizarrely empty in this nether fortress. I started to wonder if it might be a bug because it's so empty. I haven't seen any mobs in here at all. So according to the website, it is a bug. Uh, apparently what's happening is structures like nether fortresses and ocean monuments, they're not spawning the appropriate unique mobs like guardians and wither skeletons. That's a huge bug! That's like by far the most game-breaking bug that I've personally encountered in Minecraft, like ever, snapshot or no. It's, it is marked on the website as a high priority, so hopefully it will be fixed. But while we wait for a fix, I thought, you know what, I can at least find a- Oh, hello! I can at least find a blade spawner and get the coordinates written down uh, so that I will have that handy the next time. But it turns out that the spawners are actually working, so I'm able to get blaze, just not with our skeletons, apparently. Ah, it's so terrible! I hope they get this one fixed really quickly. I was planning to go to an ocean monument at some point, but that will have to be on hold and, until they can until they can get this fixed. And I I don't know if this would fix shulkers spawning in end cities or not. How horrible to go all the way to an end city and not get any shulkers. Oh my god. <laughs> that would just be the worst. Ah. But anyway, I think I'm going to hang out here, see if I can get another blaze rod or two, and um, then we can go make ourselves some friends. Fresh back from the nether, gonna make myself some friends, gotta get this all set up. Boop boop be doo, boop boop be doo, gotta get the materials, boop boop be doo. Boop boop be doo. <sighs> Doing all the stuff in the right order. Cause I've done this before a few times. Put in the bottles in the brewing stand. Charging everything up. Then we need a spider eye. Boop boop be doo. Boop boop. Be -doo. Boop boop be doo. <sighs> Gotta get the spider eye brewed into fermented. Boop boop be doo. Boop boop be doo. Tag nabbit! Ah, oh, where's my potions chart? I did something wrong. Learning from our mistakes. Boop boop be doo. Boop boop be doo. Making potions right after looking at the chart. Voodoo. Voodoo. Why is it that potions are like impossible to memorize? I always have to look them up every time. Oh well, that's okay. We're gonna have friends soon, and ultimately, that's what matters. Friends. Friends are important. Are you ready? Are you ready? Eek! It's working! Ah! I'm such a nerd. But, you know, I mean, seriously, this this whole process makes me feel a little bit like a mad scientist. You know? Like, what kind of person am I that I take enemies and turn them into friends? Actually, now that I think about it, that's, a, that's really cool. 
I take my enemies and I make them my friends. I like it. Hello there. Are you ready to learn mending? You're you're going to be a mending villager. Are you excited? Yeah, this is exciting. Okay, come on. Mending, mending. That that's not mending. Okay. Hmm. Let's try again. Uh, that's also not mending. You really want to learn mending. Yes, you want mending. Uh, no. Uh, you, you really want to be a mending villager? Very badly. Oh, silk touch is kind of tempting, though. But no, we need mending. And you want to learn mending. <laughs> uh, you're, you're kind of telling me that you don't want to be a mending villager? But I think you actually do want it. Uh, hmm. We might run into some issues of consent here. This could be a while. So let's not talk about the ethical conundrum of trying to get this guy to consent to be a mending villager. But mission accomplished because... Oh, uh, let's not shoot him. <laughs> I got mending for four emeralds. That's not a terrible trade. Um, one emerald would be nicer, but four is okay. Four works. I can I can deal with four. So let's go get this, put on all of my tools, and I can get my tools all healed up. Hey, the achievement for finding a fortress. That's progress. Okay, so what happened was it was pretty late uh, after I got mending last night, so I went ahead and went to bed. When I got up this morning, I found there is a new snapshot that's been released. And so I pulled up the fixed bug list that they released, and the bug where structures aren't generating unique mobs was on the list of things that they fixed. So I t decided to take a quick trip to the nether just to double check, and so far, I'm not finding any wither skeletons, but I did just get here, so um, maybe I just need to look around a bit more, and I will let you guys know what I find. <gasps> Would you look at that? I found some wither skeletons! Uh, in the stupid place. But bug squashed! I'm pretty excited Mojang took care of that one so quickly. I mean... It was a really bad bug, but I'm like, I'm coming from the world of, of blizzard craft where bugs go unfixed for like years. <laughs> I've been trying to get them to fix a bug with guilds. It's not really a bug per se, it's an unintentional detrimental feature, but I've been trying to get them to fix it for like two years at this point and they haven't done it. So. Good job, Mojang. I'm I'm super impressed and happy and and ouch. I, no, 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 I should pay attention to my health. Nothing of importance lost, and I've returned back home again. Well, I was wandering the Nether both in this episode and last episode. I've been collecting up the new plants and the stuff that you need in order to farm the new Nether plants. I have to say, the warped forest really rare. I had to go far and wide looking for that one. I looked it up to see if there's an easier way to get the warped forest blocks, and I found that crimson nilium is on the bastion loot table, but warped nilium, it isn't. And that seems kind of backwards to me, so maybe Mojang will change it. But I finally found a warped forest, and I got bone meal pads set up and did a whole bunch of farming. What I learned is basically you just need these nilium blocks and a ton of bone meal, and then you can get everything else. Like, you don't have to bring everything with you. But this is what all you get by bone mealing. The mushrooms grow the trees, and then, you know, like all of these other little planty things, it, it just it happens when you bone meal the ground. And that's, that's really all you need is, is just bone meal and a lot of patience because it took a long time but I also found something else that's really cool or I I think it's really cool when you stack the stems vertically it looks like that and then if you flip them over and stack them horizontally it looks like that so it's like you know basically the same thing except sideways but 
when you alternate, when you do one vertically and the next horizontally and you, you alternate, you get this really cool pattern that I think that looks like a rose. I really like it a lot and I'm definitely going to be using that to decorate in the skeleton farm, which speaking of the skeleton farm, I've already relocated a whole bunch of materials down there. And since that's going to be the main XP source for early game, uh, and I have mending now, I'm going to be spending a ton of time down there. So let's make it party. <laughs> Welcome to the skeleton farm! I gotta admit, I'm pretty nervous how this build will show up on YouTube. I think it looks pretty cool in person, so hopefully it's not too dark. I did have to spawn proof everything because it is below light level here, but I was going for an Alice in Wonderland vibe with, um, you can see the giant clock on the wall. This is purely decorative. It's um, the clock tower above ground is set to three in the afternoon, but this one is set to midnight. I wanted to do that just for a cool little flavor. The small door next to it kind of helps uh, with the miss-sized feel of Alice in Wonderland. This here's the loot room. Once again, this is pretty basic, nothing overly fancy, a bunch of storage, um, there's uh, some so a grindstone over there, and a little smelter where I can um, smelt down gold and a trash can, obviously. Gotta have a trash can. <laughs> I like trash cans anyway. And then obviously here's the, the grinder here, once again, nothing fancy. Across the way is my enchanting setup. I threw up a couple of plants up here just to help pretty things up a little bit, but once again, it's just pretty much a standard enchanting setup with another grindstone and anvil and nothing terribly fancy. And this here is a giant door that uh, kind of contributes once again to the miss size feel, but this here serves as the like actual entrance and exit to the farm. You can see the bubble columns there. And for a bit of flavor, I hung up some quotes from Alice in Wonderland, so it's no use going back to yesterday because I was a different person then. And this one says, sometimes I've believed six impossible things before breakfast. I like that one. It's always a, rem a nice reminder to be you know, whimsical and fun. And this one over here says, every adventure requires a first step. I really like that one because it's a reminder for me. And this one here, off with their heads. I, I couldn't resist, but maybe I should change it to off with their ankles because <laughs> we slice at their ankles in order to have the skeleton farm. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> But anyway, I, I had to make sure that everything was all spawn-proof down here. 
and uh, everything, absolutely everything from the loot room, the spawner, everything is in range to activate the spawner and keep those skeletons popping in. So as I'm working down here, I will just keep the XP rolling and I really like this build. I, I think it turned out really well and, and I hope you guys can see it and appreciate it. But that's all the time that I have for this episode. I got to admit I am super excited to have that skeleton farm done and we got mending and this was just overall a great progress episode to push this world forward a little bit. But I have big plans for next episode. We're gonna build off of what we did here. I'll give you guys a little bit of a hint. Next episode is gonna involve a bunch of bone meal, a flower forest, and making things all purdy. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Ta-ta for now!